What's up, everybody? This is your boy Khalid with another episode of Talk What You Know. I'm about to tell my Ron Dane story. If you don't know who Ron Dane is, you'll know by the end of this story. I'm going to take you guys all the way back to 1995 when I was a sophomore in high school, age 15. My best friend at the time, Sharon Buchanan, and I tried out for the uh, football team. We were on the JV. We knew we weren't going to make the team, so we kind of used it as something to do. We played around a lot in practice. And uh, during the final scrimmage before the season started, I guess that whole all season, there had been a quarterback controversy between two seniors, uh, Justin Patton and Lawrence Posey. They were the two quarterbacks up for the starting quarterback job, which was really important. And towards the end of the scrimmage, we were all on the sideline. Sharon and I were on the bench. I was joking around, like not paying attention. Sharon was like, click, click, pay attention. Turn around and look up. Justin is standing on the sideline and Posey is sitting on the bench actually with us. And he might have been like, it might have been like two people next to us. And then it was Posey and Justin was directly in front of them. The reason Sharon told me to pay attention because Justin and Posey were arguing. And where I came in, Justin was, he was standing not over him, but maybe like five yards away on the sideline. Uh, a little bit away from the from the bench. He was like, Posey, I don't feel like it today, man. And Posey was like, look, face it. I'm probably going to start because I have more accuracy than you. <laughs> Justin said again, Posey, I'm telling you, I don't feel like it. He was, and Posey was like, face it. I'm more accurate. I'm the starter. You don't have any accuracy. So Justin said, okay, I don't have any accuracy. He took the football and Tom braided it into uh, Posey's face and it was this pause because the football stung him maybe after like a second or two uh posey got up and double mugged <laughs> uh justin in the face boom and then they started bringing it and everybody was letting them fight for a little bit until the coaches noticed and then everybody broke it up they was bringing it um Nobody really won. I just tell that that uh, story to set up what's going to happen towards the end. So what wound up happening was I believe Posey got the starting spot, but they they flip flop. Like Posey would start the game and play two series, then Justin would come in and play two series, and they would keep flipping throughout the games. We wound up being one and two. The two games we lost to uh, Eastern and Washington Township were really close. I think we lost to both of those teams by a combined total of seven points. So we were, and we won a game and we were like this close to being ranked because of how hard we had played these teams that were supposed to be, that were supposed to beat us that we almost won the game. Having said that, game four was against Overbrook. Now Overbrook is a high school in, the, in Pine Hill, New Jersey. Uh, in relation to Philadelphia, Pine Hill might be depending on where you're going, 20 minutes away. So where we're from in Camden, Pine Hill might be 15 to 20 minute drive, depending on where you're coming from in Camden. Having said that, we had to play Overbrook in Pine Hill. One day after practice, it might've been probably Thursday before the game. Um, there was a buzz going on. Everybody was excited that we were going to be playing Overbrook because Overbrook was the number one team in South Jersey at the time. Now, Overbrook, again, had Ron Dane. At the time, I had no idea who Ron Dane was. Don't ask me what planet I was on. Maybe I wasn't paying attention, but that's what happened. So we're in the locker room and after practice, and a guy on the team named Clayton was like, yo, put that, uh, that method red on. So they started banging how high. Again, the whole football team is jamming to how high. I had never heard this song before in my life. So my man Sharon used to put me on to all the hip hop. He put me on to The Source. He put me on to really Nas, to a lot of people Sharon put me on to. Everybody's like vibing and jamming to the song. I don't know it. I'm just bopping my head. I don't know the song. Excuse me as I kiss the sky. Sing a song of six piss, pocket full of rye. Who the want to die for their culture? To their body like a vulture. To Italian. Mm. Everybody's rocking out. The uh, music is blasting. People getting dressed and getting changed from football. Next thing I know, the music cuts off. 
guy is standing on um, one of the benches and it seemed like the whole team got quiet. He was snapping. He was already really snapping before I was paying attention. Again, I was never paying attention. <laughs> so I look up and I see this dude snapping on the team. And excuse my language, I'm just being verbatim. He's like, fuck Ron Dane. I know y'all motherfuckers not scared of Ron Dane. Like, this shit's starting to piss me off. Everybody talking this fucking Ron Dane shit. This and that, he going off. I turn to Sharon. Sharon might have been two or three lockers away for some reason. So I'm like, who is that? <laughs> so again, he was like two or three lockers away. So other people heard me. So people are like, yo, that's Lil E. So I'm like, excuse my language. I'm like, who the fuck is he? I had no idea who Lil E was. Again, I don't even know the guys on my team. And they was older and on the varsity. So I didn't really didn't interact with them. They're like, that's Lil E. Like, just shut up and pay attention. Little E is snapping, particularly on the defense. I know y'all not scared of Ron Dane. Fuck Ron Dane. So he going around asking people on the defense, um, are they afraid of Ron Dane? I forget everybody he asked, but I remember three things in particular. Um, come to find out, Little E was from Centerville. I didn't notice at the time, but I'm looking at my boys from Parkside. Now, two of my old heads who were from Parkside who are on the team, Pop, <laughs> Rasheed Pollard, and Victor Ringo, who we call VI. I look at Pop, Pop not saying nothing. I look at VI, VI not saying nothing. I look at my man Sharon, Sharon paying attention. So I'm like, all right, I need to be paying attention too. Third thing is Lil E went over to Big Batch, the guy on the team named David Goosby. His nickname is Big Batch. Lil E, like, by the way, Lil E's name, I think, is Eric Williams. Lil E is like, Big Batch, are you scared of Ron Day? Or Big Batch was like, no. <laughs> Lil E was blacking and everybody was listening. The music stopped. He got on the bench. He was like, fuck that. Fuck Ron Day. This all I got. I need y'all motherfuckers to play your hearts out on Saturday. Like, this all I got. I don't have nothing else but this. And y'all acting like y'all scared of this pussy? So I'm like... Who was Ron Dane? <laughs> I had never heard of Ron Dane before Lil E was snapping saying his name. Don't ask me why I wasn't paying attention or where I was going. I had bad experience in high school. It was not fun for me, but I remember these incidents. So having said that, again, I was never going to play, but to be able to go to the varsity games, I was the stat keeper. So games one, two, and three, I kept the stats. After every game, one of the seniors on the team, again, his name was Big Batch. Big Batch would come up to me and be like, oh, by the way, my nickname, if you don't know, in high school was Bookworm. So, <laughs> so Big Batch is like, Bookworm, come here, let me see the stats. He would come to me at um, halftime before the team went in, or sometimes it would be right after halftime and after the game, and particularly after the game. So he would look at the stats real quick. So he was the starting middle linebacker, the starting middle linebacker. So he would be like, yo, give me like two extra tackles, something like that, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I would pad his stats. At the end of the third game, I noticed that another dude on the team, another senior on the team named uh, Lenny Hall, which they call Lin Lin, he kind of was getting suspicious. He would see Big Batch coming up to me talking. He didn't say anything, but I seen him kind of like make a funny face. All right, boom. The Overbrook game comes. To make a long story short, we lost to Overbrook 30 to 28, and Ron Dane gave it to us. He scored every touchdown. Right before halftime, he ran for like a 54 yard, or he broke the broke through the line up the middle. He ran for like 170 yards. He was killing us. Um, having said that, we were in the game. We were down like 30 to 22 with like a minute to go. We scored a touchdown. I remember uh, Posey threw a, a, a pass to um, my boy B. New. Belay was Scott. He caught the two-point conversion. We were down 30 to 28, and then we kicked the onside and didn't get it, and Overbrook won. We lost by two points. Several things happened immediately after the game. First of all, the whole team was furious, frustrated. My man Justin, the other senior quarterback, um, again, he did not win the starting spot, but he played a lot except for the Overbrook game. I don't remember if Justin got in or not. If he did, he played sparingly. He might have got like one series. 
It was Posey pretty much the whole game. So Justin was furious. Justin was crying. He was mad. You did not want to piss him off for like the next hour. He was at the peak of his animosity. Everybody was mad. Uh, Big Batch came to me. He looked at the stats. He's like, give me two more solo tackles. Give me, uh, give me like three more assisted tackles like that or whatever. Again, Lenny Hall, who had kind of was suspicious from the last game, saw it again, but he didn't say anything. So, like I told you, the bus ride from Pine Hill to Camden is like 15 to 20 minutes. Having said that, we're on the bus. Everybody's mad, like furious on the bus. People crying. People got animosity. And it's real quiet. Out of nowhere. <laughs> and again, I don't really know Lin Lin. I didn't know Lin Lin because he was older. So, I wasn't really around him. Out of nowhere, maybe from like three, four, five rows back on the bus, all I heard was, hey, bookworm, let me see them stats. It's Lin Lin. So immediately I'm giving him the stats. Do whatever Lin Lin tells me to do. It's dead quiet all of a sudden. Maybe like 10 seconds later, and again, excuse me, excuse me for my language, he's like, what the fuck? He's like, hey, bookworm, Big Batch ain't have no seven solo tackles. <laughs> So all I hear on the bus is like, what? Like you hear a bunch of what's like, what? Like people like kind of like, no. So now I'm in 10th grade. I'm 15. I'm like 95 pounds. I got the entire Cam to High football team ready to whoop my ass. <laughs> I can't beat anybody on the team one-on-one, -on -one, let alone the whole team. They ready to destroy me on this bus. And that was a long additional 10 minutes home. We get off the bus, Lin Lin shoves the, um, the clipboard, the stats clipboard into my chest. He live it. Everybody's living because we lost the game. Big Batch, mind you, did not even defend me. He never even said anything. I'm like, come on, man. All right. Needless to say, that was my, <laughs> my last ever game doing the stats. And all week long in school, no, not all week long. I say maybe like around Wednesday. Guys on the football team was like, hey, Bookworm, we watched the film. Uh, Big Batch did not have seven solo tackles. We were counting. <laughs> oh, man. So anyway, that's my Ron Dane story. Maybe uh, guys on the team will remember this. This is Charismatic Lee. I'm just talking what I know. Y'all have a great night. Get at me.